So now that our Hyper-V server is set up, what we need to do next is we need to go ahead and download and install the remote server administration tools onto a workstation somewhere on the network. The remote server administration tools give us a graphical user interface that we can use for creating new virtual servers, for configuring those virtual servers, reconfiguring them if we need to, uh, starting them up, shutting them down, importing them, exporting them, basically everything that you need uh, to manage the actual virtual servers themselves. Because remember, with Hyper-V, we just have the character-based uh, user interface uh, for doing the main configuration of the host server itself. So where do you get the remote server administration tools? Well, if you go to www.microsoft.com slash downloads and search for remote server administration tools for Windows 7, you'll get this particular page uh, and you'll see that there's a couple of different tools that you can use or a couple of different versions that you can download. Now I'm using a 64-bit version of Windows 7 so I'm going to download the 64-bit version so you'll see I've got a 64-bit version here and uh, you know a 32-bit version here. So all I need to do is click on download and go through the standard process. Now I'm now using Internet Explorer 9 so if you're wondering why it looks like this that's um, that's why because this is the new way that Internet Explorer 9 presents this information. So I'm going to save that and that's now downloading and we'll come back when that's completed and we'll do the install. So now that the download has completed I'm just going to go and click on open and you can see that this actually appears to be uh, installing as a, as a Windows update. So the Windows update standalone installer will run uh, and we'll just let that go through as per normal. It'll ask you, do you want to install the software update? And I'll say yes. Goes through, copies your packages into your Windows update cache. I'm going to accept the license agreement. The update's going to be installed. Now, then there's a, the next step you've actually got to do uh, is to go into your Windows setup and go and activate the components of the remote server administration tools that you want because not only do you get the tools you need to to administer the Hyper-V server role but also some of the other server roles that you can deploy on a Windows uh, Windows server you can also deploy through these tools so this is actually quite a handy thing to have if you're responsible for for administering a network so you can put your DHCP administration your Active Directory administration uh, and run it all from your Windows 7 workstation but we're just going to use the Hyper-V components so we'll let that uh, let that update finish and then we'll come back and we'll do the next step of the configuration so now you'll see that the installation is complete so I get my installation complete message and I'm going to click on close there and then you'll see uh, I get the guidance on the next step that I need to need to run through so you can see here um, that it wants me to go into control panel then go into programs then go into programs and features turn my windows features on or off and uh, and we'll we'll go through that process right now so I'm gonna close that down and I've gone into control panel and then I'll dive down here into programs and features and then turn Windows features on or off. Give this a couple of seconds just to populate. And now you'll see I've got my remote server administration tools. So I'm going to expand that out. And then what I want to choose is I want to choose my, uh, my role administration tools. So if I look here, role administration tools, you'll see there I have it my Hyper-V tools. So for the purposes of managing our demo server that's really the only one I absolutely have to switch on. Now a couple of other ones I like to uh, include in my uh, desktop uh, administration is I like to switch on the remote desktop services tools because that's kind of handy and you'll see that a little later in our uh, administration process. Uh, what else do I want? I'm also going to switch on my server manager and 
that's pretty much it for now. Uh, I can go in and I've got other tools here, my feature administration tools, nothing that I really need here for our, our demo server. I can also configure my DHCP and DNS server tools, uh, my file services tools if I want to, but that's pretty much it. All I want is my Hyper-V and my remote desktop services tools together with my server manager and I'll say OK. And then what you'll now see is the the installation continues on and it's going ahead now and it's deploying those additional administrative tools which I'll then be able to access from my start menu under administration. So we'll let that uh, let that finish off. So now that's completed, if I then go back to my all control panel items and I look under my administrative tools, you'll now see I have an option here for Hyper-V Manager and I also have an option here for Server Manager. Now I can get to those by uh, accessing them through the start menu. I'm just going to use this, makes it a little bit easier just in terms of, uh, in terms of the screen recording. So then once I double click on the Hyper-V Manager, you'll see it opens up my Hyper-V Manager console. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go in and I want to tell it to connect to my Hyper-V server. So I click on connect to server, I tell it it's another computer, and then I put in the name that I've given. In my case, it's Hyper-VSRVR2 and I'll say OK and there you have it so now you can see I've got my Hyper-V server which is running and one of the things that I actually have done um, whilst I was going through all of this is I've decommissioned one of my other Hyper-V servers and I've moved all of the virtual servers from that machine across here onto um, my new Hyper-V server so don't worry too much about all of these virtual machines sitting here. We're now going to go and we're going to go through the process of configuring um, our new uh, virtual machines. So that's it. That's our Hyper-V Manager console is now configured. So we're ready to go and we're ready to move on with our next step.